What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, my name is Dean, aka The Blue Crusader, and today I'm going to be doing a mod showcase on the Minecraft mod Industrial Craft 2. This is one of my favourite technology mods, and you guys have really loved me doing mod showcases on technology and magic mods mainly, so I'm back to show you another technology mod. Now this one is called Industrial Craft 2, aka IC2, and this is one of the mods which I'm most adept in. I'm quite clever at all the features in this mod because I used to play this mod a ton, so this is going to be a very easy easy showcase to show you guys. Now I'm going to be running through all the main features, how to get started in your world, and basically how to use all the machine blocks and the purpose of them. So if you've always wanted to make a factory mod pack or just play Industrial Craft 2 or tech it, this is going to be a guide that's going to get you into that and teach you exactly how to use the mod and get started. So let's cover the most basic first feature when we begin a world and that's actually planting crops. So we first need something here which is just called crop. And if we go through and take a look at this recipe, we can see that it's literally just four sticks. So you can make this pretty much at the start of the game, as well as obviously if you wander around the world and you break all these grass blocks, you obviously have the chance to get yourself some wheat seeds as well, which is the most basic crop which we're going to use for the example, which we're going to grow in this part of the tutorial. So we have these crops, okay? So first we need some water. Just basically we need to find a place where we can have farmland. So I'm going to go around and basically just use this hell all around here to make this land suitable to use for our farm and then we can place these crops down on the tilled soil just like this and this is going to be how we're going to plant crops in industrial craft and just like any normal crop we then add the seeds on top of these crop frames and then what this would do is it'll make the template for our new plant which we can grow so we're basically just using this as a template so we can grow on top of these small frames which we've just planted and you can see the farmland has now gone the right color meaning that it's ready to be grown on now we also have this thing called the weeding trowel. We can use this basically to get rid of all the weeds that grow on the plant because after they've grown for a while they'll go through the normal crop stages but after a while weeds will actually grow on top of the normal crops and prevent them from growing and cause a few different problems so then we can use this weeding trowel to right click and get rid of the weeds on the crops. Because if you leave the weeds to grow all around your crops in industrial craft, they will wind around your crops and basically destroy all your farmed crops. So you don't want that happening because it will ruin your crop yield. Now to remove weeds, you can also break this crop block here, which we've made, and then re-replace it. And that will do the same thing too. Or you can use this weeding trowel, which I've showed you over here, which you can actually craft by using a few different iron ingots and some rubber, but you won't have rubber at the very start of the game, so you probably won't be able to make this straight away. Now, instead of using a bucket for artificial water, it's best to place your farm near a natural water source, which is why I've chosen a lake and river. This is just so we have a constant supply of water to replenish all the crops we've just placed down. Now, I've spawned some bone meal. As you can see, in Industrial Craft 2, we can't just use bone meal just like normal crops. It doesn't exactly work this way. You can see we can use bone meal on this grass, but when we try and use it on the actual crops that we planted on these frames, it doesn't tend to work. Now, when the plant fully grows and reaches its full cycle, you can just right click and harvest the crop and then it will leave behind the seeds, which would usually drop inside this frame and basically allow it to automatically grow again. So it's basically a full system that goes around 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 in a circle. Now that I've showed you the most basic form of farming at the beginning of the mod, the second thing you're going to need in Industrial Craft 2 is rubber. Now rubber can be retrieved and processed in a few different ways and to actually find rubber we do need a rubber tree. So you're going to have to go around searching for a rubber tree. Now I'm going to just show you the example of rubber wood just so you know what it looks like so we can kind of stay around this area we're currently in. Now rubber wood just kind of appears like dark oak or a normal oak but kind of like a darker shade. So it looks exactly like this, okay? And the way that you would gather this is you'd have to craft something called a tree tap. Now you can get an electric version of these and you can get a normal version of these. I'm just going to show you the normal version, which is the most basic. And obviously at the beginning of the game, you're going to be gathering wood anyway. So you can make this very basic recipe just using wood planks. Now, what the tree tap does is it will actually let you right click on the rubber wood and it will pop out sticky resin. But... This rubber wood doesn't have any sticky resin naturally spawning on it because we've spawned it manually via creative mode. There will usually be a few different orange dots over the trees, which you may notice, and you can use the tree tap by right clicking on those to get extra rubber. Now we're just going to drop into survival mode. I'm just going to cut this rubber tree normally, and you can see that when we cut it down with a normal axe, we will get the rubber wood back. Now this is important because I'm going to show you the most simple way to actually get rubber from the rubber wood. So for this, we're going to spawn a furnace 
furnace so you'll basically need to get yourself a furnace which is pretty basic to use and then you'll need some fuel so we're just going to use basic coal in this situation even though there's a few new fuels in industrial craft and we just throw in the rubber wood in our furnace now as you can see when we put rubber wood in a furnace it basically smelts it into normal jungle wood so if you want to process rubber wood into a normal wood you can put it in a furnace but the thing we're looking for is the sticky resin which I told you that you can get from right clicking on a rubber wood tree if we have sticky resin which I'm gonna spawn over here we can put the sticky resin in the furnace and this will process it directly into rubber, okay? Now there are other ways of using rubber wood and the materials gathered from these trees to process into rubber, but this is the most basic fundamental. So using a furnace to smelt the sticky resin straight into rubber. So now we actually have rubber using this method. So at the very beginning of the game, this is probably the most easiest way of getting rubber, but you do need one of these tree taps. Now, when you right click and use this tree tap on rubber wood trees, it does have low durability. These will basically break very quickly. So you will need to make a few of these, especially if you go around to gather a lot. So now this will all process into rubber and we'll have a big stack of rubber, which we can use. Now, the best thing is after you gather rubber wood from rubber wood trees and basically cut down the trees, you're going to end up getting a few different rubber tree saplings, okay? Now, I'm going to go around and place a few of these around this area so we actually have some real naturally spawned generated rubber wood trees so I can show you how they're usually supposed to appear. And then I can just go ahead and I can actually use bone meal on these trees. So now I'm going to show you an example of what these trees look like if you would find them because since we're growing them from saplings these will be normal trees obviously i've shown you the wood but i want to show you what the actual tree appears like in game just so i can actually show you the process firsthand so you don't have to just listen to it in theory so as you can see we have now spawned a few of these rubber trees and i've grown them directly using our bell meal which we have in our inventory and this is an example so as you can see i have my tree tap now which we've just made and there's this small orange rectangle which is basically a hole inside the rubber wood tree. And this is called a resin hole, okay? So when you find these resin holes on the rubber wood, this is a good sign because we can right click and it'll make that kind of squelching sound and it'll pop out sticky resin. So this is how we would actually gather from these rubber wood trees that we find out in the world. And sometimes it'll give us two, three, but most of the time it gives us one. And most trees only have one of these resin holes, okay? So there's not that much potential to gather a lot from each tree, which is why you're gonna have to find them. But this is how we gather sticky resin and process it into rubber in industrial craft, just like this. It's pretty simple. And then we just throw it in the furnace and we smelt more of it. Now, around three to five of these rubber tree saplings is all you really need because then you can keep recycling the process and make yourself a rubber farm. So I would recommend after you gather a few of these saplings, just plant them around your base and start a rubber wood tree farm so we can kind of automate the process and gather a lot of it in bulk. So all you would do is just plant the trees, wait for them to grow, and then you would break all the leaves so that the saplings drop and then just rehash the cycle all over again. I would continue doing this until you have like 20 trees and basically just make yourself like a mini forest i know it seems quite excessive but like i said each time a tree reaches its final growth cycle it's not actually going to produce that much sticky resin so the more trees you have and the more you can make this process go around until you have a lot it's going to make the rubber wood tree process and just farming rubber in general just really simple so let's go over the default vanilla ores and some of the new industrial craft ores and some of the purposes and why you should actually gather them so the first one we're going to cover is gold now this ore is not very useful in vanilla minecraft at all i mean it is kind of later when we reach the nether update etc but in the old versions which we are on which is 1.12 this isn't very useful at all but gold ore in industrial craft is actually a pretty useful ore especially when we actually break it down into its dust form which you'll find out how to do later now each ore has a few different materials we can process them into which are useful in the mod so gold is a pretty useful resource which you want to make sure not to skip when you're exploring in the world this is important in a lot of the mid-tier machines in the mod so it's pretty important that you do pick it up now tin's also really common inside industrial craft 2 and we will use this later for certain different ingots and items like tin plates so i still would recommend collecting that now as for copper this is required for a lot of things in the mod so 
copper wires is probably the most important one which we can use alongside the rubber which I showed you how to create. Copper wires are really important inside industrial craft and they're actually one of the more cheaper wires to create so gathering copper even though it's still quite common like tin is a really good ore to collect in abundance. Just like tin there's absolutely plenty in the world but just get as much as you can do. Now iron is something in vanilla minecraft which is good for mid tier gameplay but in industrial craft you're going to need this throughout the whole game and throughout your whole playthrough. This is because iron is used in nearly every single machine in industrial craft and you're always going to have a shortage of iron so you need to get a lot of this stuff. You're always going to need more and more iron the more machines you create because you use iron ingots and bars basically as the material for every single recipe so you need to make sure you gather as much of this as you can because you're always going to be on the hunt for more. Now coal is used as a fuel source but the best thing to use coal for is a fuel source. You can still use coal for fuel source in industrial craft because it's really important. A lot of machines, like certain different furnaces and generators, are going to require coal. Now, one thing that I would recommend though, is if you're using coal for very simple things, which are kind of like a waste of coal, I would recommend, for example, if you want to just use coal in a normal furnace or normal furnace fuels and make torches, I would use charcoal because then you're not wasting the normal coal. So I would recommend using charcoal just as normal furnace fuel. In terms of coal, we're gonna use this later to make coal dust, which is pretty important, okay? And coal dust is something which we're gonna use for our power farm. So to make solar panels in Industrial Craft 2, you are gonna need coal, okay? So coal is actually important. If we look at the recipe, we need coal dust, glass, a generator and some circuits. So coal is pretty important, but I'd save it for machines and solar panels. As for uranium, this is super rare. It's basically kind of like an emerald. You'll probably find it a lot more than emeralds in Minecraft, but that's just kind of something to compare it to. It's one of the more rare ores, kind of like diamond, and you don't find many per vein. But this is going to be what you use later if you choose to make a nuclear reactor. So you can see we have our nuclear reactor here. So we use uranium to create this reactor and basically power it, okay? So this is basically the main purpose of that. And the nuclear power is not something you need to do in industrial craft, it's kind of optional, but it gives you a really good power source, but it's really hard to make it stable. As well as making a nuclear reactor though, technically you could use it for more nefarious means. You can actually make nukes in industrial craft, which is kind of funny if you think about it, and we can use uranium for that too. Now you do need an iron pickaxe or grater to actually mine uranium because it is still fairly rare and also hard to mine. But I'd really recommend trying to get it as much as possible because you won't find that much in the world. Now let's run through the other ores which we didn't cover previously. So redstone is also pretty important. This is basically in abundance when you reach a really low level when you're mining. And this is used in a lot of the first steps of making machinery as well as things like certain circuits and cable types. So you should gather as much of redstone as you can. Diamonds, still important, okay, even though they are usually the best ore in the base game, they're still important in industrial craft. Now, you only need three of these, and then to put them in a chest, and then leave the rest of the diamond ores. It's best when playing industrial craft to use a fortune pickaxe to mine diamond, because it's really not worth wasting it if you're not using fortune on your pickaxe. And we're going to use these three diamonds to create something far better than the normal vanilla pickaxe, okay? So if you get three diamonds and put them in a chest, that's a good thing to leave over for later. You can also produce diamonds with coal in industrial craft, okay? And I'll try and remember to touch on this later if I can. But basically, there's two types of diamonds in industrial craft. So you have the normal diamond and then you have the industrial diamond. So the industrial diamond is basically like an artificial diamond. But diamonds have... An interesting application in industrial craft, so don't waste them on tools and armor because we do have a few other uses for them. Now, Lapis Lazuli, instead of wasting it or using it on enchants, I'd recommend just gathering as much of it as you can because we're going to use this to create Lapis Lazuli blocks. Because certain advanced machines inside industrial craft will use Lapis Lazuli, but it will require you to make a block, which requires obviously nine pieces of lapis and then you can make a machine. So try and gather as much of that as you can, put it in big enough stacks so we can actually create blocks out of it. Now, lava, how is lava useful? Well, for a start, lava is useful to create a nether portal without needing a diamond pickaxe. So that's really useful. If you're pretty good at Minecraft, you should know how to do that. Now I'm a noob, so I probably would struggle doing that, but you can make a nether portal without a diamond pickaxe, 
with lava. And also the other reason why it's so good is we can put lava into buckets. And I'll try and mention this a little bit more in depth later, but there's a block in the mod called the geothermal generator. And using a lava bucket will put power inside the generator and it'll use the lava to basically create EU energy which will then obviously power other machines so this is a really important thing so you are going to need to gather a lot of lava but geothermal machines are not very consistent and they're not very sustainable because the power goes down drastically over time but that's also another one of the really nice generator blocks which we can use lava for now what can we use lead for now lead will be used more in the mid and later game stages of industrial craft so this is used for intermediate level batteries which are really useful and also the use in the nuclear reactors which you can choose to create later so you're not going to need lead really for a while in the mod now obsidian has some pretty interesting applications too so we use obsidian in the process of turning coal into diamond and we use it to create a nether portal which is really mandatory because you want to go to the nether to gather glowstone dust which is also a really important material you need for mid-tier machines too so obsidian definitely has its place and it's definitely something which we're going to be concerned about you can go underground now and start mining and gather as many materials as possible so for the next few steps we're going to need basically at least this amount of material so that's 27 iron ore 7 rubber 4 redstone 3 copper ore three tin ore and three flint so back at base we're basically going to take out the sticky resin and smell our 27 iron ore and we're also going to smelt these ores too so we're going to put our copper ore in here and the tin ore in there and we're going to process all of this and we're going to wait until it's completed now you may be wondering why we smelt in all this stuff well this is going towards our first machine which is called the macerator which is going to break down some of our ores and this is a really important machine which creates ore dust this is going to be the next step in our guide to create our first machine so we've created our tin ingots and our copper ingots so i'm just going to gather those in our inventory and then we're going to wait for this iron to smell so i'm going to spawn some sticks which you can obviously gather from some trees this is pretty simple stuff and i'm going to spawn a crafting bench because we haven't needed this just yet and I'm going to grab some of these iron ingots which we've already started smelting and I'm going to create a tool okay so the first tool I'm going to create is the hammer so as you can see this is the recipe this is the forge hammer and it has a specific amount of uses which is kind of like a durability so do keep this in mind when we use it so we've created the forge hammer but we also need to make another tool which is called the cutter now to make the cutter we need to use our new hammer we've got which is the forge hammer and we need to create iron plates, okay? And luckily for us, we already have iron smelting. So once this finishes, we can use the iron to create iron plates and then create ourselves the second tool, which is the cutter. So this is the recipe for the cutter. And as you can see, to create an iron plate, we just use one ingot next to a forge hammer. And for the cutter, we need three plates. So we can just use three ingots in a crafting bench next to the forge hammer and we can create three plates. And then we can go ahead and we can make the cutter. Now we have the two main tools we're going to need for the next steps. So we're going to take all of these ingots and we're going to use all of the copper and all of the iron ingots to make them into these plates. Okay, so we can go ahead and we can just make the copper ones. We only have three right now and we can make some iron ones while we wait for the rest of our iron to smelt. So now we have all of our iron ingots smelted. We're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing we did before and finish them all off into plates. And now we're ready to move on to the next stage of the process. So earlier we created some rubber okay and i currently have seven rubber which i showed you together and i have the rubber earlier which i used as an example okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to use this tool the cutter which we just created too so put the cutter here and then put one of these plates next to it the copper plates and this will create some of this copper cable okay so then what we can do is we can place the copper cable and we can create some rubber wire so this is how we create rubber wire. So now I'm going to go ahead and use all of these copper plates and I'm going to break them down into cables and then I'm going to put them next to our rubber, the seven rubber, and we're going to make six insulated copper cables. Now, along with this, we're going to use the redstone we created and put these on the left and right hand sides, put the cable on the top and the bottom rows. And in the middle, we're going to put an iron plate and this will give us an electronic circuit. This is the basic circuit board, which we're going to use in all machines. Now we still have some of these iron plates, so we can put these all around the edge and use eight of them to make a basic machine casing which is something we need for all machines. And then we can craft our first machine, which is the macerator. So put the machine casing in the middle, the electronic circuit here. And one thing I need to note, which I forgot to tell you, is we do actually need two cobblestone too. So put the basic machine casing in the middle, 
cobblestone on the left and right, the electronic circuit on the bottom and the top row should be flint and this will give us a power tier 1 macerator. So now we can actually use our first machine which is the macerator and I'm going to get rid of this tree because this is kind of in the way and I'm going to place this down here. So now we have a macerator which is our first machine. Now a basic description of what this does is you put an ore in here and providing the machine has power it will break down that ore, one piece of ore, into two ore dust. And then we can use this for certain other things later. This basically doubles our mining productivity inside the mod. So it's a really useful machine to have. And it's probably the best to make first like we have done. So you may be wondering, let's just put an ore in for an example. Let's just do iron ore because it's the most basic. We put it in and nothing's working. Why is the machine not powered? Why is nothing happening? That's because we need a generator. We do actually need power for the machine to work, which is also why we're going to make that next. So we have three tin ingots, okay? We should still have these left over. So we need to craft these into plates too, like we did before. So we have three tin plates. And then what we want to do is we want to make tin item casings. So we're only going to craft two of these into tin item casings. So then we should have four and we should have one plate left. And then the last plate which we've left over use the cutter next to it and make tin cable okay so now we have tin cable and we'll insulate one of these tin cables that we have over here and we'll make one insulated tin cable and then we want to craft an re battery okay so we should now have what's left over to do this so two redstone in this tower shape with an insulated tin cable on top and then on the left and right sides put our tin case in here and we should have an re battery which is not charged yet okay so this is one of the main ingredients for the generator this battery now there's two ways we can craft a generator okay and both of them kind of require the same materials so we're just going to use these eight iron plates left over to create a basic machine casing go in our crafting bench and then we're also going to need a furnace so we should already have a furnace which we made earlier but we're just going to spawn another one and we put the furnace here with the machine case in here and then on top of that, we put RE battery and we make a power tier one generator. So now we have a generator. I'm going to place it here, one block space to the left. And we've created our generator. Now there is two recipes for the generator, but I've showed you the most basic, simple one. They both basically require the same materials anyway. So I'd recommend using the one that I've showed you. So we have a generator. If I place it directly next to it, generator requires a fuel as its input. So we're going to throw in some coal. And we can actually place the generator directly next to it. And then we don't need a cable from the generator to the machine. And it now will power our macerator. And you can see the macerator is working and breaking down our iron ore. And this red thing here means that it has power. So this is receiving power. 1.2k out of 1.2k. So it's receiving max power. And it's giving us some crushed iron ore out of the output of the machine. Now, you can't move the machines in industrial craft by default. So we're going to actually need to create ourselves a wrench. If you mine one of these machines, instead of using a wrench, it will give you a basic machine casing and then you'll need to get materials to build the machine again. It's not going to drop the machine itself. So don't move things with a pickaxe. You need to move things with a wrench. So I'm going to show you how to make a wrench. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making something called the bronze wrench. Okay, so the bronze wrench is pretty important. As you can see, if we just type in wrench, we can see the industrial craft wrench over here. And the recipe here is bronze ingots. So we need to create bronze to actually make this. And this is important, so we are going to need this. So I'm going to show you how to get bronze, because bronze isn't a naturally forming ore. This is an ore which is man-made. We need to process ourselves. It's basically an ore alloy, which is comprised of two different ores, being tin and copper. So let's spawn some copper, and then let's spawn some tin, okay? Now you guys are going to obviously gather this naturally. In our macerator, we're going to put some tin ore in and we're also going to put copper in so i'm just going to show you the basic process and then i'm going to spawn what we need so when we put the tin ore in the macerator it'll go through the macerator over here and you can see the output will produce crushed tin ore okay but we're looking for tin dust so you may be wondering how do we create a tin dust how do we get tin dust okay well to get tin dust we need plates or tin ingots okay so the input shouldn't be the tin ore it should be the tin ingot. So you need to smelt the tin ore first and put the ingots in. So when we're using our macerator, we're going to put the tin ingot in. And this is going to break the ingot down into dust, which is what we need. 
So mine the ore, smelt it in a furnace, get the ingot, place the ingot in the macerator and break down the ingot into dust. That's basically the most simple way that I can explain it. So this is tin dust, okay? I'm going to do exactly the same with copper, just to show you that the same process works that it should do. And then I'm going to spawn some copper and tin dust and show you how to actually craft bronze dust. Okay, so now I've showed you how to make copper dust too. So you're going to have to do this with both ores to gather what you need. And then to make bronze dust, we are going to need copper dust and tin dust in this ratio. Now you can actually break down the ore block directly too which is the crushed ore, which I showed you before, because that works basically the same for the recipe. You're going to need, I think, silk touch to actually mine the ore blocks. So that's kind of a waste of time. I'll spawn some copper dust, and I'll also spawn a stack of tin dust. So now I can go in the crafting bench and show you how we do this. So once you've got enough of each, we're going to spawn the copper and put it like here. And this is basically the, the ratio. So it's three to one. It's tin dust to three copper dust. And this makes bronze dust. Okay, so this is how we make bronze dust. And then, to smelt bronze dust into basic ingots, we throw the dust in a furnace and we just smelt the dust and it compacts it into an ingot. Don't know how that works, but that's basically the process of making it. So this will turn the bronze into bronze ingots, okay? And then when you have enough bronze ingots, which we only need six of, to be honest, so I'm just going to put six over here, we can actually create the wrench, okay? Now we can create the wrench. So now if we right click with the wrench, it will pick up the whole macerator block. Now it will do the same basically for every machine. So we've picked up our generator and this is what you want to do. Okay. You want to move things with the wrench now by right clicking on it. If you don't use the wrench, you're going to lose a whole lot of materials and potentially a whole machine block. So it's really important you do this. So I showed you how to make the wrench, the cutter and the forge hammer, but what if we don't want to use the cutter and forge hammer and we want to completely automate those tools so we don't have to use them or carry them around in our inventory? Especially because each of these actually have a specific number of uses, so eventually they run out and the durability hits zero anyway. So we can actually make a machine which completely does all of the processes these tools do, but in one machine block. So let me show you the block which we're gonna create. So this is called a metal former, okay? So a metal former is what we're gonna make next. And this is the tool which basically works as a cutter and a forge hammer all in one. So this is a really useful, nice tool for us to create in our industrial craft progression system. Now this tool is pretty cool and it can craft three copper cables using just one ingot, whereas the actual tools can only make two. So this is a pretty good machine. Let me show you what you guys are going to need. First of all, we're gonna need 15 copper ingots, which come from eight copper ores, if you're using the methods which I've shown you so far. Then we're gonna need 12 iron ingots, so 12 over here. And we're going to need some rubber too, which we should already have from earlier. But if you haven't got it, just get six. And then redstone is also what we're going to need as well. And we only need two of that. So we're going to make some copper cables, okay? So we're going to make our copper plates like what we did before. So we're going to use our copper ingots. So we're going to craft all of these copper ingots into copper cables, okay? So just like we did before, we're going to use the forge hammer. And then we're going to break it down with the cutter and break these plates into cables. And then we have 30 cables from what we've just done. And we're going to insulate six of them, okay? So this is because we only have six rubber for this process. So we're going to insulate six of them. So we have insulated copper cable, six times of those. And then we're going to craft nine iron into plates, okay? So just put nine iron here, use the hammer, and then we have nine iron plates. Now, what we're going to go ahead and do is using this copper cable, we're going to use these iron ingots that we have left which is three and we're going to put them in the middle and we're going to use all this copper cable which we have and basically overlay this whole thing so we're going to do this three times so we have three lots of these which we should just have the perfect amount for and this lets us create three of these copper coils okay copper coils are important then we're going to need an electronic circuit which we've crafted before so we need one iron plate in the middle surrounded by some redstone and then also the six cables we just made. So that will create ourselves another circuit, just like we did earlier in the video. And then we have an electronic circuit, okay? Now, a basic machine case, and we already know how to make this, right? We basically just put all of our iron plates we crafted just now around the corner, and we have a basic machine case in. But this isn't all we need. We need some of these toolboxes. So we're going to need two chests, which we already know how to make, so we're just going to spawn two of those. One for each, and we also need bronze item casing, and we need five of these for each toolbox, and we need ten. So we need ten of these bronze item casings, which we can use from breaking down bronze plates. So I showed you how to make bronze earlier, 
So basically we would just have the bronze ingots over here and we would use the hammer right next to it and this would create 10 bronze plates. And then we need to break these down into bronze item casing. Okay, so we just use the hammer again and we break this down into item casing and we'll have enough. So I use too much bronze there, you don't need that much. But now we have all the materials we need to create these two toolboxes. So I'm just going to go ahead and make one more of these. So we have two. And then now we can create the metal former in this recipe. I'm just going to click move items and it'll put it into the recipe for me because I have the just enough items mod, which is really quick to craft. And now we have the metal former. So we can put this to the left side of our generator which already has coal which is making power for us already and the metal former will now power itself and you can see there's two different modes okay so we have extruding we have rolling and cutting so extruding is the third new mode which is in the metal former which we haven't really covered before then we have rolling which just emulates the forge hammer and cutting which emulates the cutter so for the rolling and cutting modes this replaces the need for any of these two tools which we made earlier so now we basically don't need to have those with us unless we're carrying them around with us and we need them out in the wild when we're exploring now it doesn't really matter what happens in terms of where we're putting our machines i mean the metal former here is working and getting power from the generator and the macerator is also getting power over here too if you want to do things a little bit more complex or a little bit more complicated we could go ahead and if you want to make more copper cables we could put the metal form up here and then we could put the macerator which we previously had on top of the generator and you can see it's still going to power the macerator that way and we can put a cable going underneath from the generator straight into the metal former up here and then it'll give the metal former power too so this is basically another way that you could put them in a shape so let's go over the metal formers modes in case you didn't understand them rolling cutting and extruding rolling basically works as the forge hammer which creates the plates and it also turns those plates into casings, so you know the basics of that because I've showed you that tool. Cutting is obviously the cutter, which makes wires for an example, and extruding converts ingots directly into those three cables, or three to four cables, which I mentioned earlier, instead of two to three, which you can do by cutting plates manually with the tools. So this is what extruding does, it's mainly just for cables and wires. And you can do a few different other things inside there too. Now another machine is the iron furnace. Okay, this is really basic and easy to make because I've shown you how to do the iron plates and we can also make those in our metal former now and a furnace is pretty easy to create. So an iron furnace is basically just like a normal furnace and you can see this button here to collect experience in here. This will just smelt exactly how a normal furnace will. So you can see we can just put iron ore in here and coal and it will smelt slightly quicker than a normal furnace. Basically, that's the main difference. And you can see it's just going to smelt this iron like a normal furnace would. This basically operates faster than the vanilla furnace, but it's also more efficient and you get more out of the fuel that you put into it. So the coal that we actually put in here is going to last us for longer and be more purposeful than if we used it in a normal furnace. So I'd recommend still making one of these because they're still really useful, even if they're not super fast. Now, an upgrade over the iron furnace as well, if you want to get into electrics and power, is actually an electric furnace. So an electric furnace is also another furnace, but this will require power. We can put this on top of here to give the electric furnace power in here. And then if we just put copper ore in here, this will smelt really quick, even faster than the iron furnace, as you can see. And this is because it's an upgrade over the iron furnace, but it's also powering from the power coming from the generator. So we don't actually need any coal or any fossil fuels to actually power this furnace. So this makes it really sustainable because it all operates from the same power mainframe. Technically, we do need fossil fuels and coal, for an example, because that's going into the generator, but we don't need direct fuel inside the furnace because it's all been directed from the same power source over here. So this basically allows you to smelt using electric power instead of charcoal or coal. And the iron furnace I showed you before with that recipe, we actually use that as the base to create this electric furnace. So we use an iron furnace with redstone and this electronic circuit, which I've showed you how to make a few times previously, and that will create the electric furnace in industrial craft too. So let's talk about power storage. We've done power generation and the most basic of machines, but let's talk about the basics of power storage. So one thing we can create in industrial craft, which is the most basic of blocks to store power in, is called the bat box. And you can see this is a tier one bat 
that box and it shows the output and the capacity of the energy which can be stored inside. So basically we make this using three different RE batteries which I showed you how to create earlier so we can use those. Then we use wood and we use an insulated tin cable which we've already made earlier too. So you should be able to make this pretty simply. And basically this just adds a much larger energy storage buffer to your generator and then simplifies the operation that we have. So it's basically improving the productivity of this whole machine space that we've been working on. So I'm going to actually remove this cable here and I'm going to place a bat box here. Okay, and now we have a bat box and power is actually seeping now into the bat box from this generator and the power is going down. So this generator is getting pretty overworked, but these machines have also stopped gaining any power because some of them aren't actually now linked into the generator because there's no cable going in. So to fix this, you'd have to change the direction of the bat box. Okay, and this is what we're going to use our wrench for. As you can see now, this is getting electricity and the bat box is still getting electricity from the generator over here. So it's directly getting energy from this generator. So there's not really any power being displayed on there, but the machines are still actually getting power. But now it's just coming from the bat box and it's storing all the power it's gaining, pushing some of it out and also keeping some of it inside the block for later. So this is the most basic power generation system with now a power storage block. And there's a few different of these storage blocks in industrial craft which you can upgrade. So I'm going to show you the most basics of them because I don't really think there's a much there's much time later to cover every single block and how to craft them. But I'm just going to show you the other upgraded versions and what they do. As you can see, we have a few different ones here. Okay, so I'm going to spawn some of the most basic. We have the MFE which is in different tiers and in creative mode you can spawn them with already power stored inside them that's why there's two variants of each and we have the mfsu so you have the bat box the mfe and the mfsu i think there is one other i'm not entirely sure but as you can see i'm going to show you the recipes of these so the mfe which is the stage before the mfsu we use these energy crystals we use the machine casing a gold insulated cable which you make in the exact same way as the other cables just with a different ore the machine casing i showed you how to make and these energy crystals which are made from this energium dust which we create by using redstone and also diamond dust which we get from breaking down diamonds in the macerator which i showed you earlier so that's how to make the mfe which is basically a block which can store 4 million EU power okay so that's pretty that's pretty hefty and the bat box which I showed you the beginner block only stores 40,000 so that's a big upgrade then we have the MFSU which is uh, arguably I believe the best and as you can see over here this can store I believe 40 million this can store 40 million EU power so MFSU is pretty beefy this is basically the best one and we'd upgrade an MFE with an advanced machine casing, which is a basic machine casing with steel plates, advanced alloys, which is made by the compressor, which I'm going to cover a little bit later. So this recipe is a little bit more advanced. And then we've got these Lapatron crystals, which we make from Lapis Azuli ore, one of these energy crystals, which I explained a few moments ago, and an advanced circuit, which we create with an electronic circuit, which we've already made, surrounded by all these different types of ores. Things get pretty advanced later into the mod, but even though it's advanced, that's basically the next tiers of power storage, which is super important in industrial craft because you're going to eventually have a huge technology tree of different machines and a factory setup, which is going to require a lot of power. So that's how we're going to fuel the whole system. So let's now go on to another basic machine, which is really useful too, and that is the extractor. So the extractor is basically a block which we can use in the production of rubber. So if you're thinking of wasting rubber by just smelting sticky resin, that's not the most optimal way, okay? If we want to optimize the whole rubber production system, we need to craft the extractor. I'm going to put the extractor here. Currently it has no power. It would be more smart to put the extractor near something which has power. So I could root a power cable here, root it down, and then we could put the extractor somewhere where there is actually power going into it, which could be behind the generator here. And now we'll get power in there because there's not really much space in this setup I've done because I've not really thought about that. The extractor, let's look at the recipe, okay? So the extractor requires four of those tree taps, which I showed you how to make earlier, out of sticks. So they're really simple to make. Then the basic machine casing and a circuit. So this is one of the most easiest machines to make. And refer to the previous steps in the video if you forgot any of these recipes which I've already showed you. But that's how to make that, okay? So let's take a look 
at the extractor itself. So to make this, you'll need nine iron ingots, six rubber, four tree taps, two copper ingots, and two redstone dust. So that's all the materials you need to actually create this. If this has power, you don't need to put any batteries in or anything like that. We have some sticky resin already. So I'll just throw this in the machine just to show you basically the process of it. So as you can see, we're now putting one sticky resin in. Now, if we smelt sticky resin in a furnace, we get one rubber, right? But if we put sticky resin in an extractor, we get three rubber per sticky resin. So basically we're increasing the yield of rubber threefold. So it's a much more optimal process and we get more materials. So this is a really nice block and we're gonna need a lot of rubber for all those wires, which we're gonna need for our machines. So this is a must have block and it's definitely one of the first machines which you're gonna to wanna to create, especially since is one of the more simple ones. So we talked about solar power earlier, so let's touch on that a little bit more. So let's take a look at some solar panels. So this is the solar panel. We have the two electronic circuits, we have glass, we have the generator, which I've already showed you how to make, and we also have this coal dust. So we can get coal dust by a few different methods, but let's look at the macerator, okay? Because we've already made a macerator, so this method is actually already accessible to us. Just to show you guys a little bit of an example of how to do this, just in case you still don't understand it too much, our macerator we created earlier, we can throw coal in here, and it'll start the process of breaking it down into dust. So just like what we do with ores and what we do with ingots, if you put coal inside the macerator, it will break down the coal, and it'll break that coal down into coal dust, okay? So this is how we make the coal dust, and we need coal dust in the rest be when we're creating our solar panel so that's how to make the solar panel they're actually really easy to make so you should be able to know how to make all of those now to make a simple solar panel setup you need to make sure that wherever they're placed, they have a completely unobstructed view of the sky above. This is because if there's anything blocking the light source, like trees or anything, so they can't get power from the sun, it's going to mean that they're not going to work. And remember, since they work off solar power, they're only going to be working at the daytime. When there's no solar power, they're not going to work. So these are not going to work at nighttime. So I'm actually going to place these alongside the water over here, which is not really the best spot because it's not really that close to the machines but I'm just going to randomly make a setup over here of all these solar panels so we can just basically place them anywhere and I'm going to set the time to day so they can obviously be operational in the sun and this is not a good location this is just an example if you actually want to know the best location to actually put solar panels the best location is actually putting them connected to the top of the bat box so I would leak cable from the bat box up over here and I've removed the electric furnace just to show you this. And I would connect these to solar panels, okay? So now the solar panel is being routed into the bat box and we can extend cables underneath it and obviously increase the amount of solar panels in our little mainframe system, which we just made. And I'm just gonna make kind of like a two by three set of solar panels on the top. And these should consistently get power from the sun and then store the energy which they're receiving from solar power and put that solar power inside this bat box. So now this bat box is at full capacity. It's getting energy from the generator, which is going down. We need to replenish that with fuel. But as well as the generator storing power inside the bat box, the solar panels are now getting power from the sun and storing that inside the bat box too. So we have a constant stream of energy, which is replenishing that all of our machines can work off of. So any machines that are connected to the bat box can use this 40,000 EU energy, which is stored inside the block when the generator runs out of coal. So this is a really nice sustainable system, which we can do. But remember your machines are gonna completely power off at nighttime once the energy from the bat box has been completely exhausted. So make sure you do have a backup energy source. Once these solar panels are unoperational, when it's nighttime, the bat box isn't going to receive any more power unless the generator's working. So just keep this in mind when you're trying to use the energy for your machines. So let's take a look at the manual kinetic generator. So this machine is made from a machine casing, which we've shown you how to make, and a lever. So the manual kinetic generator allows you to generate some kinetic power or kinetic energy which uses the KU symbol and this is for kinetic units and basically it's kind of a simple block which is kind of a bit stupid to be honest. We place it down and we constantly right click it over and over again and you'll actually use your hunger bar whilst doing this in survival mode so it's pretty exhausting to do but this will basically create kinetic energy okay just by standing here and right clicking on it now to create this you're going to need 31 iron ingots six copper ingots 14 ingots and two redstone dust okay so i've showed you how to make that and i've shown you how to make the basic machine casing before out of these iron plates 
which is pretty simple. But you can't use kinetic power unless you have other fundamentals because uh, you have to convert it into electrical units with the kinetic generator. So before you craft this kinetic generator though, we need to have something called the iron shaft, which is made by extruding an iron block in the metal former, which we made earlier. So let's just get an iron block or block of iron as it's called in Minecraft. And let's go into our new machine, which is the metal former. Go into the extruding tab and put in a block of iron here. And we'll go through and it'll go through the recipe stages. And once the three bars have reached the end, it should go into the final stage and create something called an iron shaft. So once we've created an iron shaft, we need to make the electric motor. Now you're going to have constant sounds from these machines, which is a little bit distracting, unfortunately, when we're playing with the mod. But the electric motor is something we need to make next. So this is the electric motor. So what we do is we have this electric motor over here and we make this out of the coils, which we made earlier, tin item casings, which I also showed you, and an iron ingot. So I don't really have to show you the whole recipe again. And then we have to craft the kinetic generator, which is completely different to the manual kinetic generator, which I've showed you before, in case you're a little bit confused about that. So we'd use a generator, iron item casings, and this shaft we created, and we'd create this kinetic generator, okay? So when we place it down, it shows you the bandwidth and the production of it. And you want to place it next to the manual kinetic generator so that the input face, which is the iron shaft, which is in the middle of this dark hole here, is in contact with the manual generator. If I just place down a block here and then shift click, then now you can see this is actually working, okay? So there's a red symbol signifying energy and now there's a bandwidth number, which means it's completely working. So now this is connected to the manual kinetic generator. So these blocks are now in contact with each other and are now working off of each other. So now this is the basics of just standing here and using the block and you'll generate energy. So now we have our basic little factory set up. This has been a long time coming and it's been quite a lot of explaining to get to these stages. But let's move on to the secondary steps, which is electric tools. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything from my inventory because we have a lot of stuff lingering inside here. Let's move on to electric tools, okay? So if you don't want to use your pickaxe anymore, and you want to use an energy variant of a tool using EU power, we can do that, okay? And it uses EU power instead of durability like a normal tool does. So it will use electric instead of having a certain amount of uses to it. And these can be recharged by putting them in generators or putting them in a storage block which has energy in it like a bat box to recharge it. And there's armor and there's tools which both work off of electricity and industrial craft and you can use all of these inside these blocks to charge them. So let's go over something which a lot of people are interested in. And this is the mining drill. So the mining drill is an interesting item. And we make these iron plates we made earlier. And then we have to make a power unit. So we make iron item casings, electronic circuit, copper cables, RE batteries, and the electric motor, which I just showed you how to make for the kinetic energy generator. And this will create a mining drill, which we can place inside of our generator, put it in the top slot here, and it will drain energy, and then it will give it a slight charge. Now, you can see, to charge this, we need 30,000 EU, which is a lot of energy. So, to fully charge it, we could technically put it in our bat box, because we have 39,000 EU in there. So, you can see just how much of this EU power that it's going to drain just to fully charge this drill. So, this is why you might want to upgrade your block to an MFE or an MFSU, like I showed you before, because you need a ton of power for this stuff. So, now we fully charge the mining drill. So this is basically fully charged and operational. And the mining drill is basically an EU energy version of the pickaxe. So it's really nice to make. There's also other tools. So for an example, we could also make a chainsaw. I've already showed you how to charge the tools. So I'm just going to spawn the fully charged version. So a chainsaw would use iron plates and a power unit too. So they're basically using the same materials, but in a different crafting recipe. Okay. So the chainsaw is pretty self-explanatory. It's basically, if I go into survival mode, it's basically a pretty fast version of an axe. So it's just an EU version of the axe, but it also works as a sword and shears all at the same time. So this is actually a tool which is multi-purpose. So if I just spawn sheep, just to show you for an example, just to show you this is how it works, I can actually shear sheep with the chainsaw. So it's basically a multi-tri-purpose tool. So this is a pretty good tool to actually make. Now, along with this, you can actually make an electric wrench. So the wrench we created earlier, there's actually an electric powered version of it. And to make the electric wrench, as you can see over here, we would use the small power unit, 
which I showed you how to make with the other tools, and we'd use our normal wrench, which I showed you earlier how to create, and we'd put them next to each other in a crafting bench, and it'd make an electric wrench, okay? And now we have an electric wrench, which is an upgraded version of the bronze one, and it works exactly the same, and it's a lot of work to actually make this, but it doesn't decrease in durability, which is one of the positives. So every time you use a wrench, it's going to decrease its durability, but with the electric one, it's not. But you have to be careful not to drop this thing in lava because after you've took ages making it, you're definitely going to lose it and that's going to be a problem. Now, I showed you earlier one big problem, okay, with getting resin from trees. Now, I've showed you a much better version of getting rubber, which is obviously from using all that resin and getting more rubber from it. But there's actually a more optimal version of the tree tap, which is an electric tool too. So the tree tap is basically an electrolyzed version, which we create with a tree tap and a small power unit. This is better because tree taps have terrible durability. So if we're looking for rubber and we're getting lots of rubber with a normal tree tap, the durability is going to go down, okay? And it's going to be absolutely horrible. But if we use an electric tree tap, it's going to give us a lot more room to actually use the tool. So if you're going to go nuts just going around getting tons of rubber from trees, you're going to definitely need one of these electric ones. There's also an item called the Universal Fluid Cell, and we create this with tin item casing and a glass pane. And obviously a glass pane is pretty self-explanatory. And these store fluids just like buckets do in vanilla Minecraft, but they can be used in the crafting recipes of many fluid-related machines like pumps, which are important later on in the game. So you can literally use a fluid cell in industrial craft to walk around with the equivalent of 1728 buckets of lava in your inventory in a cell how crazy is that instead of carrying 27 whole buckets so this is pretty important but we'll show you the whole use of this system later but i thought that was pretty interesting since we're talking about fluids and talking about cells let's move on to the pump so the pump is a really interesting tool and we use multiple of these fluid cells which i showed you we use a basic machine casing, an electronic circuit, a tree tap, and two of these mining pipes, which we actually create with a tree tap and some iron plates. And this creates the pump. Now the pump is pretty important. So when you found lava, when you're on your mining trips at some point in your level, you didn't know what to do with it, but using a pump, we can actually take advantage of that. And not only can we use that on lava, we can use it on water too, and we can use it to fill buckets or universal fluid cells for us automatically. Let's just create an artificial lava lake, just as an example, and we're just gonna uh, get our lava bucket over here. Let's just spawn a lava lake over here. Now, I'm gonna make this lava lake fairly deep, okay? And you may wonder, why is he making this lava lake so deep? Well, it's actually because lava, by default, is actually really bad in terms of burning down trees and forests. And I already know that if we make the lava too high, then it's going to spit and burn down this whole forest we've made and probably wreck our machines, which it might still do, but I'm hoping it doesn't. So we've made ourselves an artificial lava lake. Now, we're going to put our pump on top of this lava lake over here, and we're going to put a chest next to it. So we're going to put a chest connected directly to this pump over here. Here. It has to make sure that the chest touches the pump block and you can either put buckets which would be pretty simple so we're just going to throw in 16 buckets in there or you can put universal fluid cells in. So we could put a stack of 64 of these in here for an example and it will start filling all of these up. Now we can use these to create a nether portal really fast so this is really nice for progression and of course just like any machine this thing does actually need to be connected to a power source this does actually need to have a power input to actually work so it can't just work without any power so this needs to actually receive some kind of power so we need to connect this to a power source so i'm going to route the cable over here which is kind of a little bit of a scuffed setup this is not really the best uh, location to put this cable but just for the purpose of showing you this machine and showing you the purpose of it, let's just route it directly over here to this power source with this horrible looking cable, really bad cable management. And then we now have power going inside here. So technically we now have power going inside. We're now putting lava directly up to the same level of where the pump is. So it's basically submerged in lava with a chest right next to it. And then it's going to fill up these universal fuel cells. So as you can see, it's now filled in a universal fuel cell. This chest has to be connected in the right place for it to actually feed the items from the chest into it, okay? So make sure the chest is connected. You might need to experiment with the placement of it until it actually does work. But also, alternatively, if you can't get it to work, you can throw inside the buckets inside the machine itself or the cells inside the machine. And then it should basically just get all the lava for you and put it inside. So as long as it has power, this machine should work. 
So as you can see, now it's working. If you're using it inside a small lava pit, it's going to suck up all the lava and then it's going to go down to this level and there's not going to be any lava left. So you have to kind of put it inside a deep lava source or an infinite lava source. Otherwise, there's not really going to be too much to pump up. But it's going to store all of it inside the actual block interface. But we could put the universal fuel cells inside and it'll drain them really quickly into the cells themselves and create lava cells and then any extra lava that's above it it will also drain that too and put that in the cells so that's the basics of making a pump and using it on lava and it works exactly the same with water too but it's a lot easier with water because you can make an easy universal source and then fill up all the cells and buckets. Now, we can also use these lava cells and lava buckets that we get directly from the pump to then feed this into the geothermal energy, which I showed you earlier. So the geothermal generator is creating us power and energy by using lava. OK, so you could automate the system and link this up to the pump itself or just directly just use the fluid cells that we get from the pump to feed lava into it and create energy this way. Now, I showed you this earlier, but we're just going to touch on it again just so I can actually show you the recipe. So the recipe for the geothermal generator is two universal fluid cells, two iron item casings with some glass and a generator, and it creates the geothermal generator. Now our factory setup is actually pretty loud already, but this is the basics. So let's go on to another interesting version of batteries. So let's just cover batteries in general. Let's talk about portable batteries. So batteries are important. So we have the charging RE battery, which is what we're gonna cover now, which is really important. And we also have the advanced RE battery. So let's cover some of these batteries here. So we have the charging RE battery, the advanced charging battery, and the advanced RE battery, which is basically the advanced version of the RE battery. So let's look at these. So the RE battery, I've showed you how to create this before. It's the most basic form of battery. Then we have the advanced RE battery, which uses bronze item casings, insulated copper wires, lead dust, and sulfur dust, which are made in very similar fashions as the other ores in the macerator. And then we also have the charging RE battery, which is made from electronic circuits and RE batteries, and the advanced charging battery, which is made from a charging battery, multiple advanced RE batteries, and four heat exchangers, which are made from various tin and copper plates with an electronic circuit in the middle. So this might be a huge influx of information, which might be confusing at first, okay? So electric tools use a lot of EU, and I showed you how much it takes to charge one electric tool it's a lot even if we have tons stored in an electricity storing block well you can also charge tools with batteries too so if we have a fully charged battery we can charge a tool really simple with that now the charging re battery has three different modes which can be changed by right clicking it when we're holding it in our hand okay so we have mode disabled we have charge items not in hand and mode enabled so Let's just get an electric tool and you can see now it's going to automatically charge it because it's enabled. So when the tool's in our inventory on the enabled mode, it's going to use some of the energy. As you can see, it's taking EU power away from the charging RE battery and it's charging our tool for us in our inventory. So that's really interesting. OK, and the advanced charging battery has 400k EU in it, whereas the charging one has 40k. The advanced RE has 100k and the RE has 10k. So it's basically in this stage from worst to best in terms of energy storage per battery. So that's batteries, but let's cover the compressor, okay? So the compressor is also a very important tool, which I probably should have covered a little bit earlier. So using granite, diorite, polished diorite, andesite or polished andesite, stone, basically any stone type block in the game, along with the basic machine casing and an electronic circuit, we can create ourselves a compressor. So the compressor is another really interesting tool, which is really useful. OK, so let's give the compressor some energy and let's take a look. Now, the compressor can make several different items in the game and it's really useful. But some of the important ones are compressed air cells. And also the most important one is an advanced alloy. OK, so an advanced alloy is used for a lot of complex machines later. And we put a mixed metal ingot in the compressor to create an advanced alloy. And the mixed metal ingot is crafted using iron plates, bronze plates and tin plates to make a mixed metal ingot, which is just multiple ingots on top of each other. And then we compress that together to make that into an alloy, which is multiple ores in a bar or a plate. So that's how to make advanced alloys. So now that I've showed you how to make the mixed metal ingot, let's just use the compressor 
that we've just created, put it inside the compressor and compress this into an advanced alloy. Now advanced alloys are really important later which is why I'm showing you that specific thing to craft because you're going to need that in a lot of different machines which is why it's probably the most important example to show you. So this is how to make an advanced alloy and the basics of the compressor which we're going to use the macerator, the compressor, the generator and the metal former are all the main machines which you're going to need which is why I've covered these ones first. So another machine which we're going to cover too is the machine called the blast furnace. So the blast furnace is a machine which is pretty important and it's made out of iron item casings with a basic machine casing and a heat conductor which is really simple because we just make that out of copper plates and rubber. And the blast furnace is also another block over here and as you can see, it has a pretty complex interface, okay? Now, you can make steel by heating iron inside this blast furnace because steel is something which you're going to need for a lot of things later. Now, you get steel from iron, but it also produces a byproduct or a waste product called slag 2, okay? But it's a very important source of coal dust, which is why you should keep slag because it's a pretty important item. Inside something called a thermal centrifuge, which you can see is also another machine, which I'm just going to briefly show you the recipe of, which uses a mining laser, coils, iron ingots, advanced machine casing, and electric motor. And this is a machine which basically lets you convert that slag into coal dust. Okay, so this is another machine which I'm not going to cover too much, but that's how you would do that. But I'd recommend building the thermal centrifuge as early as possible along with the blast furnace. Now, I'm just going to briefly touch on this because it's quite complex for most people watching, but there's a few different things called transformers. So you have an LV transformer, an MV transformer, a HV, an EV, and an EV transformer, okay? And each of them have a different voltage, but transformers basically are used to change voltages. But they're pretty dangerous when we're creating machines and circuitry setups because if you do anything wrong or change the voltage to something that you shouldn't do, then your entire electronic system of machines can explode and it can cause a lot of damage and you'll have to start again from zero so it's pretty catastrophic if you use these in the wrong way okay but that's the basics of them okay and obviously you'd start off with an lv transformer so that certain machines don't explode because when you use a transformer right you can also prevent machines from exploding if you're going to create charge pads or the cesu which is another machine then you're going to need an lv transformer along with that to make sure this particular machine doesn't explode so it's really important to learn about transformers and how to use them because otherwise some e machines will explode but for the most part you don't really need transformers i've not actually had to use them in industrial craft before so let's take a look at another machine so this machine is called the fluid solid canning machine, okay? So you have just a basic solid canning machine, but we're going to take a look at the fluid solid canning machine. So with an electronic circuit and machine casing and tin item casings, we can create the solid fluid canning machine, okay? Which has an interface here, which has a few different modes. We have canning, we have drain from cells into tanks, we have fill cells from tanks, fluid in rich mode. This is basically a multi-purpose machine in industrial craft, which is used to enrich fluids on the fluid in rich mode over here. And it can be used to fill universal fluid cells with liquids too, like biogas for an example. And we just press this button to shift the mode and change it to a different mode, depending on the purpose we want to use the machine block for. Now food comes in all different sizes, but we can use this machine to basically can goods, okay? So this is more complex as an interface than it usually is, but I'm gonna show you the basics of it. So you would create something which is obviously called a tin can, okay? And then you would get the food that you want to pour inside the tin can, and you would put it inside the food slot. So I'm just gonna put potatoes in here. So I'm gonna put potatoes in there and a tin can, and then the machine will go through the recipe stage. And once it reaches the final end of the bar, it will basically can the food that you've put in, in the second input slot, and it'll put it into a filled tin can. And then basically we have a canned version of the food, canned goods. There's a specific list of foods which can be canned because not all of them can be placed in them, but that's basically the simple method of that machine in particular. So one interesting machine which we can also cover is something called the ore washing machine. So this ore washing machine or ore washing plant as it's actually called is a machine where you create with basic machine casing, two buckets, a set of iron plates, 
two electronic motors and an electronic circuit. And we create something called an ore washing machine or ore washing plant, which sounds all the more confusing, right? Okay, so we're just gonna give this some power and you'll see the power fills up very slowly in comparison to new machines. This is because this requires a lot of EU to run. So a lot of power needs to be inputted into the ore washing plant to actually work. So that can be a little bit problematic and it might mean you might need to upgrade your whole system a little bit to make the most out of this. But it purifies ores one step further to get purified ores by using water, okay, and some power. And you can get tiny piles of ore dust by doing this process. So the input would be obviously a set of water. So you'd use water buckets and you put them inside here. So we can just keep we can just keep filling water in. So I'll just keep throwing in water buckets in here just to fill it up as much as I can. I'm gonna actually fill this up to the max amount because like I said, this is gonna use a lot of power and potentially water. Now we have a full machine, okay? So then what you would do is you'd place in a crushed version of an ore. So let's just put crushed iron ore in here for an example. And you can also click on recipes to see what you can actually put inside this if you just want to know. So for an example, you'll get tiny piles of dust, normal full size piles, piles of dust and sometimes purified crushed ore. So this is what we're going to use it for. It takes a little bit of a while to process, but it's kind of like a recycling machine in a way. So after the process finishes, it will give us a few different things. So from one crushed iron ore, we now have one pure purified crushed iron ore, two tiny piles of iron dust and one stone dust. So you're just making the most out of your ore or crushed ore and getting more out of it. So this needs water to work and any water container can go in here or you can use a pump with something which is called a fluid ejector upgrade, which adds water to the machine automatically. So the pump setup we had before over here, if you have a water source instead of a lava source and you have a fluid ejector upgrade, which is this, which we create out of tin plates and an electronic motor, and you put that inside the pump and link up the pump next to the oil washing plant, the pump will then automatically feed in water to the oil washing plant. And then this will basically feed in water automatically because it obviously uses a lot of water. So that's a more sustainable method of doing it. So now we have a pretty nice machine setup with basically most of the most basic machines, but let's take a look at wind power. So if we want to take part in wind power, let's have a look at the wind turbine, okay? So the wind turbine over here is a machine that we create with shafts, two iron shafts, which I showed you how to make earlier, a basic machine casing too, and then we have a wind turbine. Now this is a source of EU energy, which is a pretty nice source of energy, but it has high material cost in correspondence to that. So if we have plenty of lava over here and our geothermal generator to fill the EU needs that we need, this will be better than crafting the wind turbine. But this is also another method of getting power, okay? There's different rotors we can also place on the wind turbine, but some of them will wear out eventually, unfortunately. But if you get all of your iron from mining, there's some better options, obviously, than this method. So to create this whole process, we're going to need 49 iron ingots, 6 copper ingots, 14 ingots, and 2 redstone dust. So we also need, along with this, we need a wooden rotor. Okay, so that's a wooden rotor blade. And we use those blades to make a wooden kinetic gearbox. Okay, so I'm going to show you the recipe. So the wooden rotor is wooden logs with wooden planks. And then the wooden gearbox is four wooden rotors and an iron ingot, and that creates the gearbox rotor. So the wood rotor will last three hours inside the wind turbine, and it requires a certain wind level from 10 and 60 MCW, and it has a wingspan of two blocks surrounding it, okay? Let's place the wind turbine over here, and we can put the rotor inside the block, and it says no space for the rotor, okay? So we're going to take the rotor out. This is because we do actually need to uh, place this block up high so i'm just going to literally just place this all the way up here just so we have space for the rotor and we're going to put the rotor inside the block and now you see the rotor's turning and it has an output and health of the rotor which will go down over time after it's been used for a while and then you can use the kinetic generator which we made earlier and place this next to this block as you can see the kinetic generator is connected and there's a certain bandwidth level and there's a red highlighted electric dash which means it should be working I showed you this whole thing earlier with a manual kinetic generator, so this is basically the same thing. Now there's also a tool we can use which is called the wind meter. Okay, so this is another electronic tool which we can charge over here. And we create this with tin and bronze item casings with one of those power units and then we can charge it. So this provides information about the wind conditions. So as you can see, 
we can right click and it shows us the effective wind strength in the MCW units and the wind strength as well. So this is basically what we can use to measure that. This is an optional tool and you don't really need this, but this is the basics of making a wind turbine to gather some wind energy. We can also make an electronic jetpack, okay? There's a normal jetpack and there's an electronic jetpack. So let's take a look at these recipes. So the normal jetpack over here is the most basic jetpack, but the electronic one is the one that we're looking for to make. So you need glowstone dust, four iron item casings with a bat box, which I showed you how to make earlier, which is that power storage block, the most basic one, and an advanced circuit, which is basically all the materials we need. And then we can create an electric jetpack, which we put on the chest slot. And then when we hold space bar, it lets us fly up inside the sky, okay? So then we can use an electronic jetpack to fly wherever we want in the world. And this is good. I mean, we can use it to avoid things like exploding creepers, get up to high spots and high places and fly around the world. And it's a pretty nice jetpack. As you can see, this contains biogas, this normal jetpack, but the electronic jetpack uses stored EU power. So we recharge this in a bat box or a generator or an MFE or an MFSU, and we can charge this. So this will use electric and electric will drain the longer we use it. So the good thing about the electric one is we can recharge it, but the normal one requires biogas. So we need an actual fuel to fuel the actual jetpack, which isn't as sustainable or easy to obtain. Now, a really cool, interesting block for me personally inside Industrial Craft is a block called the Miner, okay? So if you think about build craft with the whole quarry system, I guess you could kind of think about this as well in a similar fashion. So the Miner is a tool which we create with a chest, two electronic circuits, a basic machine casing, and something called a mining pipe. And you can also make an advanced miner, which uses a miner, advanced machine casing, an MFE power source, four advanced alloys, another normal miner block and a teleporter which is a very advanced block which i'm not going to cover right now but that's how to make it so we can create something called a miner okay which is basically just going to automate the mining process and it's a good machine if you're super lazy and don't want to do it manually but as you can see to create this we're going to need 36 iron ingots and also this lava unfortunately the worst nightmare has become true because this lava has actually started spreading so we need 36 iron ingots 10 copper ingots eight redstone dust three bronze ingots one glowstone dust one gold one lead dust and one sulfur dust so now we've used all these materials you also need some mining pipe too, which obviously we use to create it and also to use for the general block. So we'll place down a miner. We'll try and find some extra space to place it down because we've used up a lot of space. So let's place the miner down here, okay? And we'll just put it on the edge there. Now you can see this is the miner. So this is the miner's interface, okay? So the first thing which we need to craft to make a miner work is something called an OD scanner. An OD scanner over here, I'm just gonna spawn the one that's already charged. And to make these, we use one of those advanced RE batteries, which I showed you earlier. And we use two electronic circuits, some insulated copper cable, gold item casings, and glowstone dust. And we make something called an OD scanner. And also, if you want to improve the OD scanner, you can spawn an OV scanner as well, which is actually slightly better and has better range, but it requires more energy. So this eats through energy a lot more. We've crafted an, an OV scanner. Also, we're going to just get tons of mining pipe because this is what it needs to kind of go down throughout the world. So we can put the mining pipe inside here. Then we need the scanner, which goes inside here. And we're also going to need a mining drill. So I showed you how to make a mining drill earlier, so we can just throw this in here. And this is a basic mining drill, okay? But there's a few different types of drills. There's the iridium drill. And there's also the diamond drill. Now, personally, I think the iridium is better than the diamond drill. But originally, the diamond drill did used to be the best in the mod. I'm just going to put the iridium drill in there for now. And obviously, for the machine to function, it obviously does need energy. Okay, so I'm just going to place some batteries. So I'm going to place some batteries inside here. And now the miner machine is actually working. Now, you can see... It's kind of making a glitching sound, but it's requiring a ton of energy. I mean, that battery literally drained in seconds, okay? But the miner block has outputted some iron ore here. So I'm not sure if you can put a chest here. I think you might be able to put a chest here, and then the ore will actually output into that. But as you can see, it will actually make a mining tube down here and actually start working. Now, we're going to connect this to our mainframe because this thing is literally not really receiving any power right now. It's taking power from a battery which we put inside, which is really not gonna last very long at all because this thing is gonna really be beefy on power. So, 
Now this thing should actually technically work, although it's not seeming to receive any power for some reason. So let's break the cable that goes into the pump over there and let's see if we can give this thing some power. So let's just put a simple battery inside again, just to show you that it works because my whole power system is not very good right now. But you can see this thing does actually mine around it, but it's slightly laggy. So this machine is slightly laggy, but that's the basics of the miner. Now I showed you earlier how to make an item, which is obviously the advanced alloy, okay? So this is a really important item in the mod and we can use this advanced alloy to make some pretty interesting things, okay? So let's cover a few things which we can create using the advanced alloy. So the first one is an item here, which is called the composite vest. So with a leather tunic, and an iron chest plate or an iron and a leather chest plate with all these advanced alloys we can create a composite vest which gives us two armor toughness and nine armor now this is useful because it's good for creepers because it basically gives you extra blast resistance to your chest against creepers blowing you up so it's a nice kind of entry level armor piece which gives you some pretty good protection and it basically works as an iron chest plate but a little bit better and it lasts longer than a diamond chest plate so it's kind of in between ground between those two different ores but you can craft it a little bit easier than finding tons of diamonds in some situations now another one which i really like is some of the reinforced blocks in the mod Okay, so in industrial craft, there's some really nice security type blocks, and I actually covered these in my video, the top 10 Minecraft security mods, so you can check that out if you want to learn more about these. But basically, we have reinforced stone, we have reinforced glass, which we create with normal glass and advanced alloys, and the reinforced door, which we create actually from iron plates and lead plates, because that's not as reinforced as the actual stone blocks. So basically, we can create reinforced stone, reinforced glass, and the reinforced door. Now, the reason, like I said, that the door doesn't use the reinforced stone or the advanced alloys to create is because this, this door is actually really easy to blow down, whereas the glass and the actual reinforced stone blocks are really hard to blow down, even with something like TNT it's basically going to withstand a lot of explosions. So that's a really good block to make. So let's talk about making synthetic diamonds or making diamonds in the mod. So I touched on briefly, if you've actually reached this point in the video, then congratulations, because this has been a super long mod showcase, super in depth. But earlier on, I kind of covered the fact that you can make diamonds synthetically, okay? Now to do this, we create something called a coal ball and we make this out of coal dust. So we're going to get ourselves some coal dust, which we get from breaking down coal in a macerator, and that'll give us coal dust. And we also get flint, so we can get flint. And using this, we can make something called a coal ball, okay? So we'll just make a coal ball here. We'll make eight of them. We have enough materials to make eight. And then we have these coal balls, okay? And you would put the coal ball inside the compressor machine over here, and then it will compress the coal ball into a brand new item, which is called just a compressed coal ball. So it makes this in a compressor. And then when we have compressed coal balls, we can begin this process too, okay? So I'm gonna show you basically what we do after this. So I've showed you how to make compressed coal ball. Basically now, what we need to do is once we've got a lot of compressed coal balls, we can also gather obsidian, so we can get obsidian as well. And using the compressed coal balls and an obsidian, we can create coal chunks, okay? And we can also use bricks as well as obsidian, or you can use blocks of iron in the middle. It doesn't have to be obsidian. And we can make coal chunks, okay? So once we have coal chunks, then we place the coal chunk inside the compressor instead of these coal balls. And then it will go through, and it'll be quite fast actually. And after it's processed a coal chunk inside the compressor, you'll see that the output item that we'll get now from condensing this together is actually none other than a full diamond. So this is how to make artificial diamonds. Now, like I said before, there are two diamond types in industrial craft, normal diamonds, which we've just created, but there's also a new type called industrial diamonds too. So don't get these diamonds that we're creating confused with industrial diamonds. So let's move on to a super cool thing, which is the mining laser, okay? So the mining laser is a really cool feature of industrial craft, which I really like. And we create this with redstone, more of these advanced alloys, an advanced circuit and an energy crystal. 
which I showed you how to make earlier. And this makes a mining laser. Now when we right click it shoots like a laser projectile and any block it comes into contact to, providing it's close enough in range, will basically break. Okay, and this thing does use energy, you're going to need 300,000 EU to actually charge this fully, and it eats through a ton of energy, but it lets you automatically shoot ground blocks and mine them. Now how cool is that? Now to mine a full mining laser, the energy unit you're going to need is an MFE, which has 4 million EU, so you're going to need to upgrade one of those to actually charge this thing fully. But, if you hold M, M for mode, the M key on your keyboard, and right click, it'll change the mode, okay? So it has a few different modes, we have scatter mode, explosive mode, 3x3 three three mode, mining mode, low focus mode, long range, which shoots a little bit further, horizontal, superheat mode, scatter mode, which is absolutely crazy. Now, I would presume that this is going to use the most energy, but scatter mode is going to break apart tons of blocks. Like, you can break apart huge caves doing this. And we can mine like whole caves open. Now, I never knew this back when I played Tekkit Classic. But if you want to absolutely devour a whole cave and open a cave mouth, you can basically do this with a scattershot mode. Explosive mode will shoot and then explode the blocks around it. 3x3 three three will shoot kind of like a 3x3 three three plane of lasers. And mining mode is normal. So this is the power of the mining laser. And this is why it takes so many items and blocks to craft this. Because it's just absolutely crazy. And it's multi-purpose and has tons of different uses. And it saves so much time too. Now one cool machine, which is the next step to cover, is something called the block cutting machine. So the block cutting machine is made with a machine casing, an electronic circuit and an electric motor. And the block cutting machine is a block that cuts blocks into plates logs into more planks and plants into more sticks so we get more wood out of our wood blocks and we also get some really nice plates out of our blocks so let's just spawn blocks of iron and we'll throw them inside the block cutting machine and you'll see it says block cutting blade is too weak or missing this is because it's entirely useless un unless we make something called the block cutting blade so let's go to blade and you can see we have a few different levels of blades over here okay so we have the block cutting blade which is iron which is the most basic we have steel and then we have diamond so there's three different tiers so iron is made from iron plates and a stone block the steel one is made from an iron ingot with steel plates and the diamond one is made with full diamonds and a steel ingot which you can make in a blast furnace like we mentioned earlier. Okay, so that's how to make steel in a blast furnace in case you didn't understand the step earlier. And we can create a cutting blade and in this circumstance I'm going to use a diamond one. And it has a certain level of hardness so this cuts materials softer than diamond. So depending on the rotor blade that you have you won't be able to cut certain things. So if you have a blade which can't cut a block above it, like for an example if I have an iron blade I won't be able to cut diamond blocks and that's how it works vice versa. So now you can see per block of iron I've cut one block of iron into nine iron plates which is what you'd get anyway because it's nine ingots for nine plates and it's just a simple way to just cut them directly into plates. So this is just another machine which is not useless but it kind of just is a quality of life machine to make things a little bit easy for yourself. So let's talk about one of the most awesome armor suits inside industrial craft okay because this isn't just a machine mod this is a mod which has some really cool armor suits in it and something which is really awesome which is the first tier of armor, technically the first electronic tier that's actually worth mentioning, is the nano suit tier, okay? The nano suit tier is an armor set made out of something called carbon plates and energy crystals. So I'll just give you a brief rundown of all the recipes over here. And there's a few different recipes you can use for these, but basically it's made out of something called carbon plating and also night vision goggles for the helmet, which we can see is created by rubber, reinforced glass, luminator, which is made from iron casing, glass, tin cable, and insulated copper cable, and one of those batteries and those heat exchanges we made earlier. This is important stuff, so I'm going to touch on the process of actually making carbon plates, because that's the one thing which I haven't showed you. But this is what nano suit armor looks like. Absolutely awesome, okay? And you can also make nano sabers with the carbon plates, an energy crystal, glowstone, and advanced alloys. And these weapons are charged inside of any of the power units too. And when you hold right click, it goes into the charge mode, which does more damage, okay? Because this uses electric. If we use the normal nano saber without the right click mode, it doesn't do as much damage. But if we charge it by right clicking and using the electricity mode, which uses the energy after you've charged the weapon itself, it will do a ton of damage. And also, if some 
someone else has a nano suit, using the nano saber against them will basically weaken their armor and it'll drain the electricity out of their armor. So this is what you do in PvP. So this is basically how you'd kill people in Tekkit Classic on PvP. You'd have to get a nano saber and it would be the only way to kill someone with nano armor or at least the only way to kill them quickly. So that's the armor set and the weapon. Let's look at something which is pretty interesting, okay? So to make this stuff, we need carbon plates. So this is using a raw carbon mesh in a compressor to get a carbon plate. And to make the raw carbon mesh, you need to use two raw carbon fibers. And to make raw carbon fiber, we just use coal dust to make these. So I showed you how to make coal dust earlier by compressing one piece of coal in a macerator. So it's actually not as hard as you think to make nano suit, okay? It just is a very long painstaking process. So that's how to make nano suit, which is really cool. Now, there is more to industrial craft than what I've showed you, but I've covered probably about 80% of the mod and I've covered the most important fundamentals and features of it. If you have any questions below, do ask me those after the video, but I do have one more thing to cover, okay? And that is something called Iridium and the quantum suit, which is arguably the most powerful suit in all of industrial craft and most mods out there in Minecraft, okay? So if you thought the nano suit was cool, let me show you the quantum suit. So the quantum suit is basically an invulnerable armor set, which means that you won't be able to die in Minecraft. It's that powerful. And you can see to charge it, it uses 10 million EU power per piece. So to charge this thing, you need 40 million EU. So that's a lot of power, okay? So to charge a full armor set of quantum, you're gonna need every little bit of power inside of an MFSU block. So that's why you're gonna to work towards the MFSU power storage block as your end game, because you're gonna need that to charge this end game armor. So that's super important. Now to make quantum, you're gonna need something called Iridium to make these Iridium reinforced plates. Because the rest of the armor is actually pretty simple. I mean, the rest of the, the armor is really easy to make. I mean, you need nano suit armor as a base to make this. You need reinforced glass and advanced circuits and this scuba helmet, which we just make out of rubber, which is really easy. But it's these iridium plates which we're focused on, okay? So using a combination of any type of diamond, the advanced alloys we made earlier, and a number of iridium ore, we can create iridium plates, okay? And to make iridium ore, we can use a compressor to compress iridium shards, okay? And iridium shards you can also get from iridium ore in a mass rate. So, how do we get iridium, okay? Iridium is likely to be found in the overworld when you're exploring, and they're found as the iridium shards, okay? So I've just showed you how to make iridium ore out of shards using a compressor. And iridium is sometimes also found in end cities in Minecraft too, so if you're in the end, you can also find them there. So you're going to need to do a lot of exploring around the overworld through the end as well to find this iridium. And then we're going to use that to make quantum armor. And the ore is macerated into shards and compressed from shards into iridium ore. Okay, so this is really awesome. And if you want to run all around the world and gather iridium shards all day, possibly for days or weeks, be my guest. But the most easiest way to get more iridium in Minecraft is to scan it for replication so you can make more of it, okay? Now to replicate items, you can use EU power, okay? But you need a ton of resources. You need an MFSU, one of these power units, and tons of energy, okay? Now you need something called UU liquid to duplicate items and you would get this by making a matter fabricator and a mass fabricator is another item okay which you probably want the matter fabricator for so the matter fabricator and the mass fabricator so the matter fabricator is made from advanced circuits glowstone advanced machine casing and a lapatron crystal which is made from lapis lazuli dust an ng crystal and advanced circuits so the matter fabricator is super important okay this machine will obviously accept a specific type of voltage, which is why you'll probably need a transformer. And it's going to basically create this U liquid stuff, which we need very slowly. Okay, over here. So you need to feed it with scrap to create this liquid. So you would just get tons of this scrap stuff, place it in here, and it's going to use a lot of liquid. So... I'm going to place an MFSU and I'm going to use this stuff called glass fiber cable, which is also another type of cable which you can make out of glass, which I always use in Minecraft. And we're going to place this on here and connect the MFSU to the matter fabricator. And if you don't use scrap, it's going to use 10 times as much energy. So it's really important you do this, okay? After messing around with this anyway, you'll make this stuff called UU liquid. 
or UU Matter, okay? This is UU Matter, this is what's important here. And this is made from the Mass Fabricator or the Matter Fabricator. So if we just break the Matter Fabricator, you can see over here, now it's actually powering, okay? So we're gonna get a fully charged MFSU and put that here. And we're gonna attach glass fiber cable to it. And it's gonna explode at first. The reason why this explodes is because we didn't have a transformer, okay? Now, if we use a HV transformer, and this has actually blown up some of our machines, but we're so far in industrial craft that it doesn't really matter at this stage. So if we place down a HV transformer, and then we place this next to the MFSU, we're gonna route the MFSU into the transformer with the cable, route the transformer into the mass fabricator, okay? And we're gonna set the transformer to the right setting. And then now you can see the HV transformer has an output of 512 EU per tick and an output of 2048 EU per tick. Okay, so the matter fabricator or the mass fabricator in this situation needs 512. So you need a HV transformer rooted into the MFSU to make sure this setup won't explode and that's how it will work. Okay, so now we have this full system actually working. So we can go ahead and we can throw in this scrap stuff in here, like I said before, and it'll go up to a percentage. It'll show we have 100% energy from our energy block and the scrap will go to a certain percentage and it'll take a while and it'll use an absolute ton of scrap. It'll probably use a few hundred, like 500 or something. But after we do this, we will actually start working towards making UU matter. So we can fill this up in here and keep replenishing it. And you have to wait to create a really tiny amount. Now also we're gonna need something called a scanner, okay? So this scanner block is made from electric motors, reinforced glass, iron plates, advanced circuits, and something called illuminator, which is made out of these materials. And basically we need this scanner. Now before scanning an item, you need to store information for the scanner to output, okay? So if we just placed, oh, I've just blown up our uh, matter fabricator by placing down the wrong machine next to it. So if we place down a scanner over here, we need something called memory. We need memory crystals, okay? So we can use one of these things, raw memory crystals and crystal memory. So we create a raw memory crystal and then you smelt that in a furnace to make crystal memory, okay? And then you also need a block called pattern storage. And this pattern storage block is made out of the crystal memory we just created. So you need to make two of those by smelting the raw crystal memory in, in a furnace. And then the advanced circuits, reinforced stone across the top with an advanced machine casing and two of those mining lasers we made earlier. So this is a really, really expensive machine and you're only gonna be able to get this in end game, okay? So with pattern storage, we now have this and we can place it directly adjacent to the scanner or put a memory crystals inside the scanner, okay? And put any item that you want to replicate inside the scanner which is inside here. So we'd put inside our UU matter, for an example, and then we need to power it with 512 EUP. So that would be basically the same system with a MFSU and HV transformer so that we don't blow the thing up. And then now you can see it's actually powering it correctly without it exploding, okay? So we don't need to power the pattern storage thing next to it, but now you can see something's happening, okay? So it's scanning this UU matter. And once it does this, once it scans it, it will give information on how much UU liquid and EU that you'll need to create the item, okay? Now, this is the whole scanning system, okay? This is how to do scanning, okay? To give ourselves information and how to store our pattern. But if we actually want to replicate things, we need UU liquid, UU matter, a pattern, some EU, which is energy, and also a block called the replicator. So this replicator is a block we create with an MFE, two HV transformers, three teleporters, reinforced stone, and reinforced glass, okay? So I'm gonna put this replicator over here, and you can see that it says waiting, okay? So I'm gonna just root some power into this thing over here, into the top, and we already have a transformer which has the correct power level to put inside it and it accepts up to 2048 energy, okay? So you can see it is actually powering it here, even though we've used a low level voltage on the transformer, the machine technically is still working, but it can accept up to 2048, which it says over here is the input, but not as the output. You need to get the pattern inside the replicator by using the pattern storage system, okay? So you need to wait for this whole scanning system to finish and then give us, and then give us a final pattern to be able to put it into the replicator, okay? Because we need the stored information to be used inside the block. 
Now, remember, we are scanning you, you Matt, here, but you can also scan Iridium Shards, okay? Because the thing you want to scan is the thing that you want to actually duplicate. So, technically, we'd want to actually scan Iridium Shards. So, we can click Save here. We have Pattern. Then we can put Iridium Shards in and scan these. So, you can also click Next Pattern. And it's best to connect the Replicator right here, okay? Because if we connect the Replicator right next to the Pattern Storage, this is how you get the block to actually work. So... It doesn't have any power, so we can just link in power this way. It's already transformed. And then we now have power. And since it's next to the replicator itself, the pattern storage, you can see we now have pattern storage over here. We do have the patterns here. So technically, when the Iridium Shard reaches 100%, we could select the pattern here and then press single run, okay? And it'll show us how much EU power we need to actually generate this thing. We can use universal fluid cells filled with UU matter here to put inside the machine and then we fill the machine with UU matter and press single run and this is how we will duplicate our item. So now we have UU power inside here or UU energy and then we can duplicate the item. So this is how you would duplicate items, specifically how you would duplicate Iridium because Iridium is the only thing you really want to duplicate just because it's so valuable and takes so long to gather. So this is how to make quantum armor and duplicate Iridium. So I hope you like this industrial craft 2 guide. It was super long. I think this guide might have been multiple hours because it's taken so long to film this guide and it was more of a full guide than a mod showcase covering every single section because this mod's quite complex. If you do like these more more long form guides that take a long time to watch and are more feature rich and kind of go into the explanation of things and go into a deep dive into the mod and explain things properly then do let me know because I have been doing mod showcases that are around an hour long but this video was multiple hours long so these take a long time to edit and upload but if you do find them more helpful and useful and you are willing to sit through and watch them then let me know and I'll try and create more of these complex guides. So to download Industrial Craft 2 click on the link below in the description like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe with notifications turned on and consider pressing the join button if this guide really helped you and you got a lot more information about learning the mod from it. Pressing the join button will make you become a channel member and you'll get my Minecraft mods in exchange for you supporting the channel. It'll help me upload videos every single day and you can also join the modded Minecraft server and come play with us too. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.